Hey, thank you again for joining me this week. Uh, you know, there's some things that uh, people have been going through or life has been throwing at people that I thought I'd address. So this week, um, I thought I'd take a break. We've been looking at the New Testament church and all the awesome things that God was doing through them and how God was working um, in their own lives and helping them to help others. So this week, we're going to take a slightly different direction. Uh, that direction I would like to call some of the basics of our walk. The things that we we struggle with, and uh, especially, I think there's a book out there called The Battlefield of the Mind. Okay, the way that we think. You know, I think that most believers have this idea that they have to keep performing to some ideal in order to please the Lord. Um, and, and that's normal to think that because we're, we're living in a performance-based society. At, well, at least here in um, what they call the Western world or, you know, <laughs> whatever they call us, you know, um, you know, I may be totally wrong, but I think that the New Testament uh, church and the way that they were living, they had lives to live. It wasn't all about church. It wasn't all about um, about their prayer life. It wasn't all about that. And don't get me wrong, you know, those things are important. But they had to support their families. And unlike the Apostle Paul, who was single and he could, he could devote his time his life to total service to the Lord. You know, some of us are married. Some of us have, some of us, um, well, at my age, some of my classmates and friends are widows or widowers. And they, they're they dealing with life with their children and their grandchildren and some of them great-grandchildren. And so what happens? Do we just stop everything and... and um, and just go to church all the time? No, we are the church, okay? So I'm not saying that, you know, we should cruise through life and not continue our walk um, like 1 John 1, 9 says, that not only God does God forgive us when we confess our sin, but the cleansing part continues. That continues. And how does it continue? It continues as we interact with people and people rub us the wrong way, or maybe we may be the ones rubbing people the wrong way. But through all of that, we need to realize that uh, we're in a spiritual battle, okay? So what I am saying is we should spend time allowing the Holy Spirit into the deeper recesses of our heart in order to heal us. On a, on a daily basis, uh, not, not only when you're in church or in fellowshipping with other believers, but on your daily walk with the Lord. Yes, we all need inner healing from the interactions that we have uh, with those around us and the corrosive tendencies of this world. You know, um, if if Christians are being rubbed or trying to be coerced to be like the world, you know, we're not the only ones. That's what that was happening in the New Testament. They deal, they dealt with things like that. You know, no one is immune to the effects of life. Yes, our Creator is able to make all grace abound to us, so that we, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound in every good work. And let me just put in there, all times. You know, when you, the Bible says, when you're lying down, when do you talk to people about, or your children about the Lord? When you're lying down, when you're getting up, when you're eating together, when you're walking together. So I think it has to do more with our daily functioning as believers, and not just our church life. Because, you know, 
when we go to church, we, we just put on the best airs. We, we wear our best clothes. We, we smell good. <laughs> uh, Oh, what about those times when you're all sweaty and you, and you just got out of the yard and you're covered with grass because you were weed eating or mowing or maybe you were cleaning the house and, and somebody came by your house and you were vacuuming and you're all sweaty and you smell like some clean, cleaning fluid or something. Does God still use you? <laughs> he does. So let me, let me just put in a side note here. I believe that God takes us where we are and works with us that way, you know, in our daily lives to achieve his plan. It's not like he's surprised. Oh, no, I can't send someone to the house today because they're vacuuming and um, they're in their vacuuming mode. No. Sometimes, you know, I, there's times when I'm, I was driving home from work. And, and I'm tired, and uh, i tired from the day and all that, and I see somebody pulled over on the side of the road because they have a flat tire, and I'm like, oh, okay. So I pull over, and I help them. And, you know, after helping them, I kind of don't feel as tired because God used me, and one lady told me, you must be an angel. I said, tell my family that. <laughs> Uh, no, nope, no angel here. Uh, you know, you and I are not perfect. So you didn't go to Bible college. You're, you're a Christian, right? And I guess that's the standard. Now, you know, you're, you're, quote, holy if you went to Bible school. So you, you don't have, or you haven't memorized as many memory verses as your pastor or, or your Bible study leader or your friend who's been a Christian for gazillion years you know so you fall into temptation and you know what and you fail so so you get angry from time to time so you don't serve the Lord in full-time ministry and you struggle with your thought life and you envy others walk with the Lord or the possessions that they have and life goes on and it's like wow that guy got a knew this or knew that so you struggle with all of that. And so you hurt from the hurtful encounters in life. You know, these and so many other things like them do not lessen, not lessen as far as teaching you something. It means doesn't minimize or put down God's love for you because he loves you. You know, again, I'm not saying just give up and slack off and forget about your goals to be holy and, and to, uh, for a deeper walk with the Lord. God did not give us this life just to be monks or gurus or yogis or priests or, or pastors or any other religious specialist. In fact, I think He gave us this life so that we could be better us, the ones he created us to be. You know, although there's people who have been called to that, you know, to full-time ministry. You know, one of the things, let me tell you this, you know, and people ask me, so uh, you're a pastor? Yeah. So what do you do? <laughs> uh, I pastor a church. Uh, full-time? Yes, full-time. Is that all you do? Uh, I don't know how to answer that, but, you know, that's not all I do. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a pastor here, and there's people who call me and say, you know, Pastor, I need, I need help with this. And so I take time, and I go and help them. And it's like, oh, but you're supposed to spend all your hours in the office. And you know what? I spend my life living life. And around people who don't know Jesus. That's what Jesus did, right? Look, all his disciples, they weren't, quote, religious people. And yet, he used them. You know, God knows that we have mouths to feed. 
God knows that we have things to take care of, houses to maintain, bills to pay, and life to live, and all that comes with it. You know, don't you think he knows all that we encounter on our journey with him? He does. So, where did we get this idea that God is not pleased with us if we don't toe the line? I'm going to use some some lines here that the world uses. It toe the line or keep up with the Joneses. And I'm nothing against Joneses, if that's your name. Okay? Or make the cut. No, you and I are not among others in life who will be allowed to keep living if we have already achieved. God's going to let us keep living because we've reached, reached the highest levels and we are perfect already. And we are living exactly like everybody expects believers to live. No, that, no that's not us. Because everybody I know, Everybody I know, except those who went to be with Jesus already. God's working on something because he loves us and he doesn't want to leave us the same. Uh, do you love God enough to surrender all you have? Both those things that are impressive. And what about those things that are not? Did you surrender them to him? Did you surrender just the fears and nothing else and all your problems to him? That's all? Nope. What we do is we come to God and we say, here I am, God, flaws and all. There's, there's guys that say, you know, when I get my life together, then I'll turn my life over to God. Then you don't need God because you are already got yourself all together. Yeah. So how's that working for you? <laughs> I know for me, it's not. I'm, I'm still being worked on by God, by the Holy Spirit, on a daily basis. And not just, oh, well, you should live up to this standard because you're a pastor. No, as a person. As a, as a person. In fact, uh, this past weekend, I was at a canoe race. And, um, and I, I told someone, they was asking me about, you know, about the Lord and stuff. And I said this a, a number of times. I said, you know, it's not God that's bad. It's sometimes it's us. We make God look bad because the world has a higher standard for us, you know, and believers, other believers have higher standards for other believers, not, not themselves. And I'm not talking about any of you out there. But, you know, God wants us to live for Him. And in doing so, we're going to please Him, and we're going to love Him, and we're going to love our neighbor as ourselves. Because all the commandments are put together into this one commandment. Okay? Are you disappointed at yourself because you messed up? Do you feel like quitting when you fall short of your goals? Yep. Been there. Done that. What about when you do accomplish a step? No matter how small uh, you think it might be. Do you minimize it and downplay it? When somebody goes, wow, that was good. Ah, man. Ah, I could have done better. Oh, I could have. You know, uh, I was um, in a uh, street ministry that we did street drama. We did drama on the street. And, and then for our, our church, we had dramas during Easter and during, during Christmas and things like that. And I was playing a part of one of those. And somebody came up to me and said, wow, that was, bro, that was awesome. And I said, it wasn't me. It was the Lord. And he said, <laughs> being the friend that he was, he said to me, that's funny. Because I, I saw your mouth open and words come out of your mouth and I saw you acting. And so he, he just walked away. And I said, okay, Lord, how do, I, how do I deal with stuff like this? When people 
actually acknowledge something that I did do good. And he said, listen good. Now, you guys can listen too. He said, tell him, thank you. That's all. This simply thank you. So, let me tell you that your Heavenly Father and my Heavenly Father is a just God. He's a Father who already shown how much He loves us. He already has shown us how much He cares for us. He takes pity, the Bible says, on His children like a father does. Because He knows we blow it once in a while. So let's look at some of the saints in the Bible who, um, when we read, we think, man, these guys, no wonder God picked them. They were awesome. And they were. But they had flaws. I right, always start from Noah. I don't know about you, but I don't know if I could have built the ark. <laughs> if you could, that's awesome. And so he built the ark and all of that. And he and the Bible says that he found favor and and in fact let me read over here. It says Noah was a righteous oh Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. That's Genesis six, eight. And then verse nine says uh, Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. And we just go, wow, I wish they say that about me. You know, and then when we read that, we go, whoa, he was perfect. Well, no, you keep reading. You find out that he planted a vineyard and he had a little bit too much to drink. He liked his drink. Okay? And not to put him down. What about Abraham? Abraham was a shepherd. And he had responsibilities just like everybody else. And then God called him out of his father's house to go into a place. When, when he got there, God said, this is the place. Right? And then when, while, while he was on his journey, he took his wife with him. And, and when they encountered some people, he told his, he told his wife, you know, I'm going to say that you're my sister. Well, that wasn't completely a lie. But then when, when they came around, and the reason why he said that was she was so beautiful that he said, well, they're going to they're gonna kill me and take you. <laughs> wow. Some of us husbands, we feel like that. Our wives are so beautiful. It's like, why are they with us? Right? And so, um, so he didn't tell the whole truth. He said, oh, who is she? Oh, she's my sister. And he didn't say, and she's my wife also. So, so he lied, and his son Isaac fell into the same thing, right? Moses killed somebody, right? Joshua, Joshua dealt with fear and pride and Gideon with self-esteem, and Samson couldn't keep a secret, you know? Um, King Saul overstepped his authority. Solomon had possession problems. Elijah was given to depression. Jeremiah was emotional. That's why they called him the weeping prophet. Peter denied. John and the other disciples, when they came for Jesus, they ran away. In fact, to a point where he left his clothes behind and he took off the first streaker in the Bible. And then Thomas, you know Thomas. They call him Doubting Thomas. And then what about the Apostle Paul? His name wasn't always Paul. His name was Saul at one time. And so he persecuted believers. Now, if you don't have any challenges in life, I question whether you are alive. Are you alive? You know, because Jesus said, in this world you will have tribulation. And James says, when we're tempted, if we're tempted by our own lust. The temptations are of our own making because we have these desires that are fighting within us. And, and the Bible talks about how we struggle with that. And all of these that are, are that I mentioned, they live normal lives. They live normal lives on a normal basis. They didn't spend their whole time in the Bible. They didn't spend their whole time um, in church. They didn't spend their whole time worshiping God by singing songs. No, they lived life. And in living life, they lived for God.
and they reverence God and they love their neighbor as themselves. And, you know, and God spoke to them while they were while they were walking, just like the guys that were walking on the road to Emmaus, right after Jesus' resurrection, Jesus is walking with them. And they they said, oh, yeah, what are you talking about, Jesus said. And he said, oh, I was talking about, you know, the Christ and how he's been crucified. And, and, and they didn't recognize him, but he was walking with them. Okay? And I, if I was you, just like I do, I use the Lord's Prayer as a simple guide to help me every day when I, when I pray. You know, um, there's a quote from a, a book by one of the pastors. He's originally from the Big Island. And um, I, I don't have the book in front of me, so I kind of wrote down this quote. It says, God chooses to disguise his ministers as nurses, teachers, waiters, policemen, and many others to touch the lives of of others daily you know I, I may have gotten that wrong but you know what i mean right uh, you are in the right place for god to use you you are in the right race whatever ethnicity you are you're the perfect person that god can use you are the right gender you are here for the at the right time you are the apple of his eye. You are the reason Jesus came. You are the one God has chosen. Because no one comes to the Father except he chooses you. So why? The reason, the only reason we question ourselves today is because the world get, puts doubts in our minds. But God has a plan to fulfill and his desire is to use us. That's why he made us the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are part of his plan, even with all your flaws, even when you think, no, don't choose me. He chooses you anyway, because his future for you is filled with hope, even though you may have struggles in this world. Yes, he loves you, and there is nothing you can do about it to change his mind. So rest in his all-powerful, all-knowing, ever-present awesomeness. He is gracious. He is merciful. He is good. He is wonderful. He is patient, forgiving, and he is love. So let's take our focus off of ourselves and put it on him because you know why? He never changes. Let's pray. Lord, our desire is from the moment we wake up to the time that we lay down our head, we will glorify you. Even when we're cleaning the house, washing the car, working where we work, going to school, whatever it is, when we're, when we're sweaty after working out, what, whatever. Lord, help us to glorify you in it all. And thank you, Lord, for using us, for choosing us, we pray in Jesus' name. All right. Hi, Mom and Brother Keone. Hey, mahalo for watching. Aloha.